News. Good evening and welcome to Raconteurs News. We're back and uh, I'm Andy Young as usual and joined as always by Jason Holmes. Good evening, Jason. Good evening as usual, Andy Young. And uh, we've got a bit of a surprise for you tonight because we were fully expecting Paul, our high level financial insider, to be on with us giving us his geopolitical and financial updates. But Unfortunately, something's gone awry with um, Paul's plans today and he's unable to join us. So we'll get that rescheduled as soon as possible and um, we'll try and entertain you for the next two hours best we can. Um, But I have said that um, we'll call it a call-in show. So anybody wants to call in, discuss anything that's on their mind or any information they want to get out there, you're more than welcome to call me. Uh, my name's uh, my Skype ID is Andy underscore Young underscore Skype, and uh, if if you want to call and speak to us, you'd be more than welcome. I know I know we've got um, Rick Dwyer over there listening in Canada. I said, well, guest pulled out today, Rick. It'd be a perfect opportunity to get you on the radio, but he said he's just finished mowing the lawn and he's sweating like shit. So maybe he'll call in later. You never know. Ah, yeah. I've mowed my lawn today, actually, as well. All right. Great minds think alike. I first take, I think it's, um, I've been feeling so much better in this last couple of weeks, um, having done the inclined bed therapy treatment, um, that that today I even went outside and mowed the lawn, which is, uh, which is huge, really. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been really good day today. That's pretty impressive, mate. I'm, that was something I wanted to mention tonight. But just before we go any further, good evening, Jimmy. Welcome back to the chat room, mate. And good evening, uh, Morticia. Welcome back, Joan. Nice to see you all in there. It's getting nice and busy in the chat room. See the captains joined us. Um, we've got Freeman Jack in there, Jimmy, Keno, Morticia, Mithrin, Nolan, the captain, and Susie. So, uh Hopefully, uh, we'll have a bit of good fun tonight. Um, but the big thing I did want to say, it's been quite a momentous uh, day or two for us. There's some quite a few strange things been going on, but um, I suppose that not really strange, but the moment, most momentous of all was uh, last night at 12.12. Luby Lou became a grandma. And ah, suppose- congratulations to Luby Lou. By Fantastic. extension, that makes me a granddad, doesn't it? It makes you, yes, it does. It makes you a, no, in fact, do you know, um, I, 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 I've got a, a bit of a point on this. Yeah, right. Um, for the simple reason, my daughter, who um, was 19 on Saturday, um, she's got herself a boyfriend. Um, it's quite, it's been serious and they, they live together. Um, they've been uh, now he's got the child, <laughs> so she's been trying to say that I'm a step granddad. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm I'm sort of like trying to say no, no, I don't want to be labelled granddad yet. I suppose it's uh, it's a little bit different when you get to your time of life, Andy. Uh, you you expect it, don't you? you cheeky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but congratulations to uh, to Luby and um, to. Tolubi and uh, Amy. Uh, Amy is it, yeah. And um, what what flavour is the uh, is the baby? Well, there's the funny bit. Um, Amy's had no end of scans, and um, 
it, it was definitely a girl. But um, the first thing the midwife said when it popped out was, oh, look, a penis. <laughs> no, well, I, I mean, you can't really put a gender on it yet, though, can you, on, on the baby A. You have to wait until it's old enough and then you ask it what it wants to be. That seems to be the uh, the norm these days. Ah, uh, right. So we're having gender reassignment as before it's off the breast, right? Yeah. I mean, when you get um, schools or councils asking children, four-year-old children, what they want to be referred to as, then uh, I, I think I read that somewhere. Oh, that's um, bonkers. Lee was on about it last night, yeah. Yeah, it was... Um, it was quite funny, some of the things that Lee was talking about, particularly the gender reassignment, and then we get a baby pops into the family who's reassigned its own gender before it's even been born. I mean, that's a pretty <laughs> cool move, that. Well, that, that... Sorry, I'm just farting about with my window. It's uh, it's fantastic news anyway, so congratulations to, uh, to your family and uh, congratulations to you as well, step-granddaddy. Mm. Uh, the granddaddy of raconteur's news, the, the raconteur grandfather. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, away from the, the grandfather business, and I, before we move away from that, I'd just like to say uh, congratulations to Luby. I know you're absolutely over the moon. I'm just so pleased that it all went well, and um, I hope you still put up with me, basically. Um, but... Yeah, what I wanted to go back to was this incline bed therapy, mate, because uh, I, I have become almost an incline bed boy. I mean, you know from experience, I was bugging you to do it way before you did it. Yeah. And people just, when they say to me, oh, you look so bloody well, what have you been doing? And I said, well, I lifted the head of my bed up six inches, nothing else. And they go, what? Don't be ridiculous. And it, it almost makes you... When I first heard about it, I thought, how can that possibly be true? But then I went on Andrew Fletcher's website, um, inclinebedtherapy.com, and um, saw that there were just loads of people all over the world having incredible benefits, You know, people with MS, people with spinal injuries that couldn't walk and being wheelchair bound for years standing up and walking again people with MS not taking their meds anymore because they don't get any pain or spasm it, it, it's just astounding and then uh, when Tony Moran won the world boxing title the other week and thanked Andrew Fletcher for the part he played in it um, I was just amazed um, and uh, I had a quick word with Andrew earlier on well sent him a few messages and uh, gave him first refusal to come on if um, as we had a missing guest tonight and uh, unfortunately Andrew's otherwise engaged at the minute but I think he might be listening and uh, I'd really really love to get uh, Andrew and Tony on a show together because um, like he said to me in those messages, um, perhaps the way to reach more people is to get athletes um, saying how good this is rather than just sick people. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can completely agree. The, the one thing that's um, a little bit difficult to get used to is in the morning when you wake up, because you've been in such a deep sleep, it takes a little bit longer to come round, whereas I used to be sort of like wake up, jump out of bed, and uh, you know uh, away I used to be. <laughs> um, but now I, I've been in such a deep sleep, and I don't wake up in the night as well. I mean, again, it, it's another thing I used to do three every three or four hours. Three hours is probably about as as long as I could go yeah. uh, without waking up. But I'm just sleeping all the way through, and it, it's just incredible the in, the energy that i feel that i've got in the daytime mm -hmm. um compared to what it used to be um and this last two weeks it's probably the first time since i got ill in fact since long before i got ill uh, before I, I knew what was going on last year mm -hmm. um i think this is probably the best i've felt it's the first time in the last two weeks that i've felt human so it's yeah, I'd, I'd recommend it to anybody. And it's a funny story, I have to, because of the the condition that I've got, I have to have my I and R done mm -hmm. um, 
every so often. And at the moment, I'm on once a week because my INR is going all over the place. Um, it's just been daft. Uh, well, I mentioned last week to uh, the nurse that does my blood test, I mentioned to her inclined bed therapy. And she said, oh, well, I'll have a look at that. I'll look, I'll look that up. <laughs> so um, I went back this week, today, and she said, uh, she said, do you know, I've looked at it. I've looked at it. And um, I've said to my husband, we need to raise the head of our bed six inch. But she says, but they've got a divan bed, so it's going to be a little bit dif- difficult. But they, they're looking into ways to, to get it raised up. Yeah. So that and that's a, a health professional who can see the, the difference in me in just in the last two weeks. Because I mean, two weeks ago, I, I really did feel like a like a just like an empty shell, like a like a ghost of a person. Really, it, physically, that's what I felt like, and I'd lost a load of weight. Mm. And I'm starting to put that back on. My appetite has returned with a vengeance. I'm eating constantly. Every single day I get up and I have a, a full English breakfast. In the morning I make myself a full English breakfast. I just can't. I just cannot um, endorse it enough. And um, it, it's just it's just been incredible. Um, it was my wife who uh, brought bought the um, the razors. Mm-hmm. And she was the one that I was thinking, well, perhaps I didn't bring it up in client bed therapy because I didn't think she'd go for it. But she'd heard me talking about it. She'd looked into it herself, went out and bought the head raise, bed raisers. And uh, we're both feeling a whole lot better. My wife didn't get her migraines anymore. Oh, wow. Um, we, we just feel tons better. Tons better. Mm-hmm. Tons better. I've not been in bed all day. For for two weeks, and and I used to be sometimes I I would be in so much pain that I'd have to be in bed all day, mm. and I've just haven't been in bed. I've I've been up every morning, half six, seven o'clock, whatever whatever you know whatever time I needed to get up, and and I've not had to go back to bed, and it's just been amazing. I can't I can't um I can't uh, endorse it enough. Well, you know, we had a chat yesterday um, about various raccoon business and um when you were talking to me tina come through and bought me a cup of tea and she said after we got off the call she said oh my god jason looks so much better yeah she said the big beaming smile on his face i mean i know you you're always a kind of jolly sort of bloke but you you've gone from looking gray with the dark circles under your eyes to looking so much better you've got some color in you Mm. And, uh, yeah, my appetite's my it's my appetite was the main thing because I'd lost four stones in in a really short period of time, which is why I had all these procedures and mm. like when they gave me that thing the other week, that was because of, they, they were having a look at what was going on inside my stomach and and my esophagus and all that sort of thing. So uh, they, they were quite worried that because I wasn't eating. Um, that I would just, you know, I was just starving myself to death, and, and my, it's just amazing how much I enjoy food. Mm. Whereas before, I, 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 it really felt like a chore, and I felt like I was under pressure because obviously you're sitting there and you're having your dinner, and, and when you're not eating your dinner, and you're not eating it, and you're not eating it, and you're not eating it, and then your weight's falling off. I know that my wife is sat there looking at me and think and, and worrying. Yeah, uh, and so it. It, it uh, that also adds to um it also adds to it, it mentally you know that I've got this mental block that I can't eat and that that oh, it just all built up and I lost a load of weight and but now I just I'm enjoying food I'm uh, I'm looking for different things I, I've got to say I do have the exact same um, breakfast every day it's two slices of bacon two eggs two slices of toast. And uh, a, a spoon of tomatoes on side. Wow. Um, and and that's it. And and it's just I, I'm enjoying food more, and I'm, I'm becoming a little bit of a bore. <laughs> Every time I see anybody, anybody says anything, I say, just put your head up, put your, your head of your bed up, six inch. Well, and I think also something we could possibly get across to people if we start to get athletes on who are using this is the fact that it's not just for sick people. Um, sick people do seem to get a lot of benefits, but um, 
I mean, I, I had weird stuff going on with my sleep. I, I'd gone for donkey's years uh, ever since I was a child, really, and I'd always woke up tri- tired. And like you, I've got all that energy in the daytime, and it, it's just so amazing. Something I've never experienced in my life before. Um, that was a, a legacy from way before I injured my back and ended up being some sort of cripple. But um, no, that, that's gone from strength to strength. And uh, it, it helps with the pain. It's, um, it, it hasn't totally done away with the back pain, but um, the uh, leg pain that I was getting from the track nerve, the sciatica, that has gone completely. Um, I will say, though, if we go away for a few days and forget to take the bed raisers with us, it can come back. So right. there's still the pressure there. You know, it's just sleeping on the inclined bed seems to do it. And if if we can get um, well people using it as well, um, surely it's got to prevent them being sick. And uh, something that Andrew came up with, um, I'm sure he said if you sleep on a flat bed as opposed to a bed inclined at five degrees, you, you age um, about ten times as fast. So... You'll be living oh. to be about 200 now, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And another, th- another thing about this, I mean, I've got a blood clot behind my right knee, mm-hmm. um, which due to the condition that I've got, they did the uh, reluctant to remove or to do a bypass or anything like that. So it, while it's stable, it's, it's just being left where it is. Yeah. But it does mean that the below my knee, my right leg is, is pretty cold. A bit like a dead person's leg, but it, it's cold and it's it doesn't get much blood in there. Right. Now normally, it's, I did that. I got uh, I've had that for about three years. The the blood clot, and I've been I've had to have a hot water bottle in bed, no matter what, how warm it is. No matter what, I've always had to have a hot water bottle in bed. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when I was laid flat. I would have to put my right leg out of the bed and on the floor so that I could get some blood back in it because I could feel it going numb. Wow. So, but since this, I've done this inclined bed therapy, I don't even have to have a hot water bottle in bed. I just, I can, there was never a chance that I could have, um, get in bed and not have a sock on. You no, know, but now I'm just in bed, just normal, no shoes or socks on. Well, obviously no shoes because I, right. I don't go walking about um, while I'm in bed anyway. So, uh, yeah, I've got um, – I don't have to have a hot water bottle. It's just transformed. It's transformed me, I think, anyway. I think it's, it's either that or, or somebody's giving me some drugs and just making me feel great, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to think back. We – were you with me last time we spoke to Andrew? No, I don't think I've ever spoken to Andrew. No, I oh, think right. that must have been with uh, uh, back with Tom. So it, that's yeah. quite a long time ago. Yeah, I, I, I remember the last show we did with him. It was with the CBD people. Um, so unfortunately, that one got edited out and uh, just Andrew left because uh, it, it appeared they weren't kind of living up to the promises they were making and obviously we didn't want to support that. But um, so I will say again, uh, anybody who fancies calling in, discuss anything you like. Well, well, yeah, anything you like, within reason. I know Ken will have some daft ideas if we say anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, Yeah, whether- Ken, uh, by the way, Ken, it, it, it started to it give me a little bit of abuse in the chat room. That's fine. Oh, That's fine. Good. But, <laughs> only a little bit, but I'd just like to say to him, uh, to Ken, I'd like to thank Newcastle United for keeping our place in the Premier League warm because uh, we're, we're going up Saturday. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, you got your tickets and all that, haven't you? Yeah, I got my tickets, yeah. Yeah, I got my tickets. Brilliant. And, and do you know, it, it's only, there's no way two weeks ago I would have been going. Yeah. No way on this earth two weeks ago I would have been going. But, um, yeah, it's great. We've got we, – we, we, we should call ourselves anglers. Oh. we sleep at an angle. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Inclines. Well, I, I've been trying to think of a catchy name for it. Inclined bed therapy. 
but it does what it says on the tin. I was just thinking about sloping, sleeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slope, slopey, sleeping. Mm. I'm a sloper. We call ourselves slopers. That's it. We, we, uh, you know, oh, that is one thing though. I, I have a couple of times I've nearly sloped off of bed at bottom. <laughs> I must be really fidgety or something. But sometimes I come out and my legs are halfway out of, out of bed. But oh right, yeah. we've got a foot on our bed, so it's, it kind of stops that. But uh, yeah, I've heard one or two people say, but it, there's even an answer for that. If you feel you're starting to slide down the bed a bit too much and it's getting uncomfortable. Apparently, what you do is put an old duvet underneath the top sheet, and that that just that little bit of give before the mattress will um, allow you to sink into it and kind of make an imprint that you won't slide down on. So, thankfully, yeah. we haven't cool. needed to try that. We've actually gone up to seven inches now, and oh, um, seems brilliant. Oh, so uh, how did Tina feel about you uh, with the seven inch? <laughs> she, she keeps smiling, mate. She was pleased. She was pleased that you got up to seven inch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it is. It is great. Uh, and uh, in answer to uh, Mithrin's question that uh, just put in the chat room, uh, I've been doing it two weeks. Two weeks. I started uh, two weeks ago yesterday, so I've had two, 14 days of well, of it. So that's that's how long. Yeah, it, it's pretty amazing how quickly you feel the benefits. Because, I mean, you, you start taking any sort of pharmaceutical crap and they always say, oh, you've got to take it a month before it does any good. But, but this pretty much works straight away. I mean, I, I have spoke to people who've actually <laughs> lifted it and immediately the next day felt the benefits. Um, I seem to remember Graham Hart having a right rant about it because he'd been... I think it was restless legs Graham had and he had pain with it as well and saying that um, I think his exact phrase was for fuck's sake all I needed to do was raise my bed six inches and it's mm -hmm. gone and he, he got the benefit straight away. Um, Eddie, we haven't heard from Eddie for a while, we'll have to chase him up see how he's doing. Um, I know Eddie, he reckoned that uh, he got some amazing benefits for the, the first night that he did it but um yeah if, if you're listening out there ed get back in touch we miss you fella if not we'll yeah we down. do yeah we have not seen him for ages so old ed uh, good lad um i hope he's he, he wasn't in the best of health last time I, I saw him and he had some problems with his lungs and, and stuff so uh, i hope he's uh, are we are talking about the same ed aren't we yeah look at yeah. his flying <laughs> circus yeah, so I'm thinking I'm, I'm giving this, like, you know, this long speech about him, and uh, he's, uh, we're not talking about right one. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's uh, a, a good lad, Ed. Yeah, it certainly is. But, um, but yeah. to, you, you see, the good, the thing I like about inclined bed therapy is you can tell people it, but it doesn't require them. It all, all it requires them to do is to put the, you know, to somehow lift the bed up at the head. Yeah. That, that's all it, it asks you to do. It doesn't ask you to go out and buy a product. It doesn't say, buy this. Yeah. You know, I've got, you know, ultra slim juice thing that's going to make you virile and, you know, your your, your penis will, will extend by three inches it, it, but if you buy this product, but you need to pay the monthly subscription. Otherwise, you know, your penis will revert back to its normal size. It, it, it's not that. It's just, it's just, so simple and easy to do, and if anybody anybody does it, it's not going to cost them anything. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get yourself off some of the uh, the bio experiments that are going on because I think I think that's what that is. I mean, we talk about. I know this is getting off subject, but we, you know we have got a couple of hours. Yeah. Um, but um, we we talk about geoengineering, and we can see that happening in the sky. But if you if you if you think about it, with all the drugs and the manufacturers and and the putting the fluoride in, there's also bioengineering going on as well. They're trying to engineer our, our biology into a certain mold, into a certain and and it's 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 like a, tra a transhumanist, but but we're not turning into robots. They're trying to turn us into soulless drones i would imagine i would imagine they're looking at bees and thinking that will be what we have the queen the drones that just you know go out and 
I don't know. Do they do they protect the? Do they organise the bee, the queen, or something, or in, in um, sort of right? You know, slipper a length. Um, are the, those are the ones that mate with the, with the queen? And then there's the uh, the honeybees, isn't it? They go out and, and collect all the pollen. So I think that's that's what they're trying to get us to. They're trying to get us into a situation where you automatically genetically know where you are in the ladder. So if you're um, a bottom feeder, you know, working class, yada, 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 you know you're going to be that because it's in, it's engineered into your DNA. And that, mm-hmm. that, that sort of thing that, that can go on over generations is, is really dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, absolutely. Um, there's a, yeah, there's some weird crap going on. Um, we've got a caller, so I'll just add him to the call here. And uh, one of our regular callers. At, uh, good evening, Ken. That, absolutely. Hello. This, yeah, this How are you doing, mate? Whoop. Turn your radio down, Ken. That's what they say, isn't it, on radio? And... Uh, one of oh, our yeah. regular callers. Uh, oh. Good evening, Ken. Yeah, Ken, we can hear your radio playing yeah. in the background, mate. Turn your radio down, Ken. Well, That's what they say. Please. Yeah, let's just find it. Callers. Yeah, just scroll up from the chat room. It's mute. Yeah, it's riveting radio, though, isn't it? That, that, last, that last 30 seconds. That's good. I think we sh- we right. could be on surprise. Oh, we're going again now. It's mute. Oh, it's riveting radio, though, isn't it? That last that last thirty seconds. Turn the radio off, Ken. Oh, it's going again now. Got me out and call me back. All right. Okay, so Ken, we'll call Ken back when he's uh, managed to turn the radio off. <laughs> I was oh, going to say, Ken, um, struggling with his wireless. I was going to say, message me when you turn the radio off, Ken. But if he's already turned the radio off, he won't hear this, will he? This is true. This it's, is true. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit like saying, uh, for those of you who are not on the show, new show, refresh the chat room. It's a bit pointless because they ain't going to hear it. But hey. Yes, Mark says press the off button, Ken. So, never mind. Um, yeah, um, this, I mean, the, the transhumanism thing. Um, I was talking about that the other day and with somebody and they, they were talking about the microchips and, you know, the, the length of the agenda that these predators seem to have in getting us to, to shepherd it into the ways and means that they want and the situations that they want you've got to wonder would they actually bother forcing us all to have a microchip you know we, we can all live in fear of that because we know that they keep talking about that but um if they just wait a generation um most of the next generation will gladly accept having a microchip won't they well, I would imagine most of this generation that, mm. that we've got now. I'm not talking about me and you, me and yourself. And we were in. Well, I'm in my late thirties. <laughs> Forty six is the late thirties. It's the new late thirties, and, oh, right. and, and you know. But I, at our age, uh, we're we're never going to accept anything like that. Which is why they go for the kids. Which is why it's all 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 the schools are targeted and. You get your, your the conditioned. You have to thumb for your dinner, your fingerprint, and well, your thumbprint, or and you can't anymore. You can't just give your kids some money and they get the food, and they're just conditioned into it. And so they, yeah, you're right. And the, for the ones that, uh, that that won't be microchip, they'll all have phones. Mm. <laughs> have we got the sound coming back there now, or is it? Is it all sorted now, Ken? I hope it's off. Oh, that's good, mate. Yeah. Cracking. So, so I Ken. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, bloody apple, eh, Andy? Yeah, go, oh, you, yeah. Hey, Jason, I love you, really. Yeah, I love you too, Ken. Uh, thank you for keeping our place in the Premier League warm. Uh, I've got, got my ticket for Saturday. As, as a fan of football, I'm pleased that Newcastle's out of that rubbish. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's what I'm not really looking forward to either, the, the, the intense rubbish that's going to be going on and afterwards, but, you know... It's a, it's a bit of fun. It's a day out at Wembley. Uh, I'll be have to have one or two small light ales. And, um... um, well, if you lose the final, you, you could just have a day out in Newcastle instead. <laughs> Next well, season. I've just, I've just been it's watching true, the yeah. chat room, Ken, and I see uh, you might not be able to stay long with us because Susie needs a cold, stiff one. So, uh... Fair enough. <laughs> But uh, and maybe she's talking about a drink there. Oh. <laughs> Let's hope she's talking about a, a, a drink, especially if it's a cold stiff one. <laughs> did you uh, did you notice that diplomatic silence there? Yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah, I, I thought it was very diplomatic. I was just about to say, congratulations on your diplomatic silence there, Ken. What's things like over in Spain? Uh I'm teaching him well. Wet, sunny, cold, hot. So next. That sounds a bit like here, but without the hot bit. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely scorching sunshine last week. It was persisting down with rain today, uh, but it's nice and calm. A nice evening now. So what would you like to talk about this evening, Ken? Uh, Sheffield Wednesday, if you don't mind. Uh, we'd rather not. <laughs> we want people to listen, not turn off. <laughs> um, I have no main issues. I've just been furtling around trying to get desks to work and things like that. I should have had Jimmy on him or so. Um, still one or two problems. Um, welcome back to Rack on Tours News. Sorry about that, folks. We appear to be having internet issues. Uh, I hope you can hear us okay. Um, yeah, outside meddling, me thinks. Yeah, it always happens when we get Ken on. Couldn't possibly be a Mac, though, could it? Uh, not at all. <laughs> no, listen, Ken, I've had a question um, from my mate Heath. Um, and he said, have you, have you heard about the... Um, and will it happen, the £70 passenger tax to enter Spain? Yeah, I heard about that one. Oh, tax, sorry, yeah, the £70 tax on arrival. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll find out next time I come back, which will be possibly August, September. I'm coming back to England in August. And when I come back this way, i probably get hit with it. Also, so it, 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 is good. it is it is a policy, is it, that Spain are doing that now? It's £70 per passenger. Is that is that what's happening, or, or do you think that it's... At this, moment in time, at this moment in time, I don't know. I heard it was a proposal. Um, as I said, I will find out next time I try to come through the port. OK. I'll let you... I don't know a lot. They don't normally check the stuff, they just wave through. 
if they've got to pick money up off you, it's going to take ages to get off the board. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was just reading read the chat room. Yeah, I'll tell I'll tell Ethan, and so uh, you don't know is is the word, but but you'll find out, and and well, you'll be when are you back again. Uh, August. August. Yeah. And then I have to rebook the passage back. It depends how busy it is. I'll be back for anything two weeks to a month. Cool. So, uh, apart from Sheffield Wednesday, what else do you want to? What, what, what do you want to talk about tonight? What do you want to bring to our attention? What's yeah, I was just uh, switching my monitors off. There. It, it seems like Ken's actually feeding back through your mic now. Oh, right. I could just see yours flashing up blue when Ken was talking. That was all. Right. So, uh, apart from Sheffield Wednesday, what else, uh, what else do you want to talk about? What else do you want to bring to our attention? Uh, what what's happening here is we've got um, such a lousy internet connection with our Sky Fiber broadband here that uh, it's actually dropping the stream, and uh, I think we've restarted the show two or three different times now. That's why we've got Ken has got radio playing again, I believe. Yeah, I can hear my voice coming, mate. Right, I'm going to mute my mic so you can sort this out, okay? Yeah, can can you hear us? I can hear you, yeah. You you've gone very quiet, but I can also hear me coming back through the radio. What's happened is the show's restarted, so you need to pause the player again. It's done, yeah, it's, it, it's done. Yeah, all right. Sorry about that, mate. Sorry about that, listeners. Um, yeah, so the EU bin, they're going to charge you 70 quid, I reckon, next time you uh, go to Spain, yeah? Well, um, apparently, um, I don't know, as I just said to Jason, I don't know for sure whether that's in or not, and I'll find out next time I come in. Uh, just make sure I've got a bit of extra dosh to give to mm-hmm. these thieving bar stewards. That's what the EU's all about. That's what the UK corporation's all about, how much money they can screw out with people. But but it's... Um, we, I know we complain, but really... We should be complaining about the people that are taken in by this, the, you know, the propaganda. The, the um, oh, we, if if we leave the EU, then uh, Jimmy Savile will rise again from the grave. That sort of thing. I mean, that's that's the level that it's got to. It's just got gone ridiculous. Um, but people buy it. It's obviously it obviously works. Otherwise, why you why would they use it? Uh, it's worked. It's worked for millennia, and uh, it will continue to work until people actually remove the filters and see it for what it is. Um, it's very serious. I mean, it's the one thing that I say is, well, why? Why did my father's generation bother fighting against uh, the Nazis when the, the current EU, the latest treaty, is almost a bit um, uh, Hermann Göring's plan? It's the same people anyway. It is Hermann Göring's plan. It's just, you know, the next generation of the same people putting this together. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff um, said... Jeremy, do you see it go, do, well, how do you see it going? The, the, um, sorry, the referendum. How do you see it going? Well, I'll ask you a question. Do you, do you think that anyone's vote counts? Do you think that the, uh, the plebs have got a say in this? Absolutely not. Well, there you go. How do I see it going? It depends what game they want to play. I yeah. can say it go either way. It depends what they want to do. Obviously, one, one, the one world order, the one world government wants everybody in the same union. So, yes, they want us in the EU. However, if they want to stir up some trouble, if they've got something planned, out will be the vote. And then watch what happens. And it's all because of that. 
Yeah, well, they've got a new uh, Bill of Rights lined up for us already if we leave, haven't we? Um, I've already had somebody on to me uh, about that. Um, and people say, oh, we haven't got a Bill of Rights here. Um, there's a lot of debate on that. Um, I've had some convincing arguments to say that we have got a Bill of Rights. Um, but then people talk about the Magna Carta and then there's others saying, well, the Magna Carta doesn't apply to the likes of me and you. It only applies to lords and barons. Where do you sit on that, Ken? Um, it was an agreement between the lords and barons and the, uh, the monarch of the time. Um, what came from it was trial by jury. That's the only thing we got, but we ain't got that anymore. Um, I just want to see a rule of law. Um, I was going to say returned, introduced. Um, quite simple. There cannot be a crime if there isn't a victim. Everything mm -hmm. else is contract. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to see a simplified, um, a simplified legal system. It is deliberately muddied. It's deliberately obfuscated. That's the correct word. It um, is the correct word. So that, so that people can get screwed in there. They only take them in there for money. Stick them in jail if they want. They're going to be cheap labour in there for the G4S's profits. Um, I just want to see fairness and the, the, the rule of natural law. It's dead simple. Social justice. That's what we want to see. Social justice. you are, if you've been a naughty boy or girl, then the law will deal with you. Not uh, just what, you. what about you? I know we've got this, uh, we've got people saying that we don't need to be in and, and it costs a lot of money and it's just a, I think there's 10,000 members of staff in the, in the EU that, that earn more than our Prime Minister. So um, that just shows you that it is just, it's there's a good trick, isn't it? Jason, there's 10,000 council workers that earn more than the Prime Minister. Yeah. Council leaders times his salary. Who does? The council leader, the chief executive. Oh, yeah, yeah. 180 to 200 grand a year, those guys. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but, yeah, we don't need we don't need councils either, do we? I mean, we, we need a, a trimmed out version. What we need is uh, government being something that people are conscripted into, a little bit like jury service. So you might take a year out of your career and you'll work in government. Um, that, that I think that's I think that's the way that way forward is is like a jury system even, you know, you get selected from from a role and you, you take a year out of your job or your career or whatever you're doing and you, you work in government. I think that's uh, I think that's probably the, for me, that's the best way forward. Just get rid of these career politicians. Get rid of anybody that's and, and pay them just a, a, a regular wage, just to what, what, be getting at the regular job. Well, what it's worth, Jason. My view is that if you are in a political party or any organisation, you cannot enter parliament. A political party should be a lobby group. Mm. They should not be in government. Anyone who's in a political party. Party politics is, is absolute bollocks, as far as I'm concerned. That's a technical term for it. Oh, yeah. It, well, it, well it, obviously, well, if, if, if we employed the system that I'm talking about now, I mean, nobody would be in a party because you wouldn't know when it was your turn and you were going to come up. Just one day you'd get a letter that says, as of first of this month or whatever, for one year, you are going to be working in, in, in government. Uh, then you go along to a... To, um, um, a, a selection process and, and then they decide what your skills, which department and what, where your skills will be best employed. Sounds a pretty good idea. I've been uh, thinking along those lines for quite a long time. I notice um, Jeff's just posted in the chat room. I find it strange that Bojo and Cameron were good buddies once over. Uh, now they're against each other or are they? Well, for me, you know, Bill Hicks said it, 
there's two puppets there. They're both saying different things, but it's one man with his hand up both their asses, isn't it? Indeed, yes. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that's uh, that, and that's how we're always. It's always going to be until we break this monopoly down. That these people that think that they've got a, a divine right to rule over other people, uh, until we until we say. Just hang on a second. Let's take things back into our own hands, the hands of the people. If if so, so we're talking. If there's uh, some balls up in in, you know, somebody makes a real balls up, we're going to start making sure that people are properly educated, aren't we? You know, it wouldn't take very long before people say, uh, you know, we need to properly educate people. In critical thinking as well, and if everybody gets involved, they don't have to be, don't have to be involved in uh, in great ways where it's going to take up a lot of the time. But people can get involved, and also this this should never ever be we should never ever go to war without a referendum ever ever. I, I I agree totally. I, I can't see uh, a reason to go to war in these in these days. There's, there's certainly no reason for soldiers because the weaponry is well past human beings with guns or human beings with anything. They can run a war with computers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course they can, and and that's what that's where it's going. Again, we're getting into transhumanism. But they, they, uh, again, but what <laughs> we always replace the people doing the killing or the things doing the killing, but we never really replace the people being killed, and that's that's the the, the bad thing about the terrible thing about um, any conflict is that it's it's always gonna it's always got to have dead people, otherwise it, you know it's it it it's considered a failure and and that's that's terrible that's one of the reasons to have a war though to uh, to cull the population it doesn't cull as many these days so you know wars aren't working the way they're meant to in that respect wars have always been there to cull the population <laughs> yeah i did read an article once from somebody who said that um these wars that we're having at the moment is just so that we'll have the best paralympic team in the world uh, which, let's face it, has worked quite well, hasn't it? I mean, it, it, it's it, it, it. the things being done to these young men that don't really know they haven't really got a, a gra- grasp on the concept of what they're actually signing up for, and then they're trained in such a way so that they just do not question anything. They, they, I mean, that's a, that's that's a crime and a genocide in itself. Mm-hmm. I substitute the word train with the word program because that's all training is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, programming. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to just kind of swerve the conversation a little bit sideways and uh, something that was um, mentioned to me in a conversation with uh, Rick Dwyer and, well, several times, in fact. Rick has had his runnings with uh, those in supposed authority. And uh, Rick makes a great point of reminding these people that they're public servants and you work for us. And uh, he's had some interesting responses. I gather not all of them have been favourable, but uh, he's had quite a few of these officials hanging their head in shame, particularly when he points out that... um, you know, here we are, we've got a, a, uh, a cure for cancer and you're sending people to jail for it, uh, all to protect your own financial interests. Um, and I admire Rick for doing what he's done. I admire him tremendously. I'd love to get him here on the, uh, on Raconteur's News to have a chat with us on air sometimes. I know he's a bit shy, but um, I'm sure one day he'll pluck up the courage and call in. You mentioned public servants there, Andy, and he's right in what he says, but he's also wrong in what he says. 
Um, I remember the last time I spoke to someone from Revenue and Customs about, um, well, when I used to pay tax. And I said, um, are you a public servant? Do you work for me? He says, no, I'm not a public servant. That's Revenue and Customs. And that was three, four years ago. Mm. He openly said, I'm not a public servant. Yeah, but is that about his attitude or the actual facts of the matter? Um, I would say the actual facts of the matter. We had, we had quite a conversation up to that point. Um, and he actually came out with it. I know they're not public servants. They work for the bank. And for him to say that, I found... He, he was quite arrogant, and I got to a point where his arrogance was beginning to really shine. When he came out with that, the more I set him up for it, and he answered, what I see is truth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we've got uh, Tiger Boy in the chat room. Welcome, Tiger. It's nice to see you in here. And he's posted a big, long list of acts. And um, let me just read through them if I scroll back far enough. Uh, what have we got? The petition. Oh, this chat room's on its mind of its own. The Petition of Rights 1627, the Declaration of Rights 1688, the Bill of Rights 1688, the Act of Settlement 1700, Charter of Liberties 1100, Constitution of Clarendon 1164, Charter of the Forest 1217, Petition of Rights 1627, Coronation Act 1688, Act of Union 1707, Government of Ireland Act 1920, Constitution, Northern Ireland Act 1973, Northern Ireland Act 1998. And uh, he said he's got a friend who passed the bar exam but refused to sign the secret oath. He's a mine of information and a good guy. He sent me all of that. Uh, I can take no credit. Oh, well, I admire you for admitting that, Tony. Most people will be happy to take the credit for that. But... Um, I know that uh, one or two friends have had a conversation with you and uh, you're pretty switched on about this stuff. So if you'd like to call in, Tony, and have a word with us, you'd be more than welcome. And sorry, back to where you were, Ken. Uh, where was I? Um, I've got a question. Sorry, I've got a question from Eve for you, Ken. Mm -hmm. I'll just get one. It's just come through on my phone. He said, if we do leave the EU, do you think they will make an example of the UK and put all other member states in a state of fear? I think um, if we do leave, it's a signal for something to happen. Nothing real. Uh, something like that. Something. Who knows? Who knows what they've got lined up? They don't care. But I suspect something will occur if it goes that way. And it's just to say, well, look, there, yeah, that's what happens when you don't, you know, part of the show, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I pers my personal view is that the vote will basically stay in. Mm. But if it goes the other way, I'd be very wary of what's going to happen. Well, you, you have got the, the government telling everybody that if you... Um if you don't vote to stay in, your kids won't be able to school, go to school. The whole world will declare war on us and we'll all be bankrupt and nobody will have a job. Um, so they're, they're kind of uh, pushing the vote a little bit that way. I, th I think there are people that will rebel against that. And there is quite a sizable Brexit movement from what I've seen. But whenever you see it reported in the newspapers or on the lamestream media... It's only ever reported that um, those who want to leave the EU are complete racists and fascists. Um, why fascists would want to leave a fascist organisation, I'm really not sure. But, um, yeah, they, they're pushing everybody that way. And it's looking to me pretty much like the, the, the vote's going to be to stay in. But e even if it was to leave, would, would they allow it? Would they actually publish that result because I can't believe not for one second that the Tories actually got re-elected after five years of the shit they put us through <laughs> yeah 
You cynic. What are you suggesting there, Randy? Um, the vote will go the way the script says the vote goes. Mm. Um, my view, for what it's worth. Um, for, I'll, I'll we have to play on the script then, can't we? What's, what, what's the script? What do, who do you think uh, benefits most? Who, sorry, which, what vote do you think benefits those the most? You know, the people that are pulling the strings, the people with the hand up um, David Cameron's skirt. I'm not inside their heads, so I have no idea. I'm pleased to say. No, but it, I, I, just, uh, I just, it, it, it is quite difficult because if there's, if we do leave the EU, then there's always this workers' rights thing that uh, workers will lose a lot of rights, apparently. And they, they use that quite a lot, don't they? I mean, well, do you think there's much, uh, much credence in that? What rights have workers got? Well, they've got the right to, to not smoke. Um, and, and, you know, we've got the right to have a zero hours contract. They've got a right to really... They've got a right to... Uh, having better working conditions than they will do if they don't have that right.
You're listening to RaconteursNews.com. Stay tuned for more untwisted, unsweetened news. Please consider buying a t-shirt or making a donation to help support us. Thank you for your support. We do it for us all. And welcome back to this shambolic Tuesday evening edition of Raconteurs News. Many the apologies for the... They're going to be a keeper. Do what, mate? I would just say the podcast is certainly going to be a keeper. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't see the one getting up. Um, yes, it, apologies for that. Um, all I can say oh, is whatever go. you do, do not get Sky Fiber Broadband because it's garbage. You know, it, we, we've yes. had this. We, we had a problem. The internet was dropping out multiple times a day. And then we got fibre broadband, and it was perfect while they were monitoring it for the first couple of weeks, and then it just got worse and worse and worse. We've gone from 40 meg down, 10 meg up, to uh, sometimes we're struggling to get 5 and 6 meg. Of course, whenever I call them up, oh no, you're getting 40 meg. So and it often seems to happen when the uh, technical services department are closed down, strangely enough. So yeah, uh, I do. I sorry. I just wanted to give a recommendation because I um my broadband uh, I've got uh, fiber broadband with EE. Now they used to uh, do what they call um, throttling at mm-hmm. peak times, and I phoned them up and I said, "Excuse me, but I don't see anywhere where in my contract where it that the throttling the the, the connection is." Um, in there at all, so uh, I, I expect to get what I'm paying for at all times. And, and they said, "Fine." And true to the word, it has been ever since. It's fantastic. That's EE. I uh, think it cost me twenty quid a month. Yeah, well, it's it's supposed to be costing us the same, but because of all the issues that I had last year, they they actually gave me the first year for our price, but. Um, I said to him, look, I, I know you're throttling me connection um, because it only happens at certain times a day, times when it's most critical that, that I've got a good internet connection. And uh, the, the woman on the other end says, well, no, we don't throttle anybody's connection. What could we possibly gain from that? And I thought, these are just scripted answers for people who are stupid enough to believe them. Um, yeah, and you see, the way to go is to tell them that tell them that you know that they're throttling it, and that if you that they, it's not in the contract, and, and that for some reason they're able to take you off that. So, I I that that's just my experience. The throttling well, could be coming from somewhere else. They can be jumping and piggybacking. Oh, and now Skype's wiped out. He's, I'm, I'm just, this is a possibility. It's possible out there on the whoever controls the bridges to slug your signal. Yeah. I ran my I test on mine while my um, stepdaughter's boyfriend was around who works in IT. Uh-huh. And we did a speed test. He says, whoop, just jumped on your signal there. Look, see that? I didn't see it, but he saw it straight away. So that may be what's happening. They, they pick out certain... Um, Certain addresses, everything, everything's got your PC's address on it. Everything that goes out there, uh, they can just automate something slugging it out there in Etherland. That's what Mr. Cameron's employed all these uh, so many new people for to attack the domestic terrorists. Uh-huh. That's where it could be coming from. It was quite a sad, sad state of affairs when. Uh, he, you know, you're paying for fibre broadband and you can't do what you used to do with copper broadband. Um, I, I just think it's... Because your uh, government doesn't like what you do. Well, maybe, but I, I oddly think that tonight's show is, is one of the most um, challenging forums, shall we say. Uh, hey, can I just say there, interrupt and say who was supposed to be on? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just thought of that as I was saying it. Yes, Paul was supposed to be on. Um, it's set up for that. 
could have been set up for that, but uh, it's just been getting worse and worse re recently. Uh, I noticed when I played some tunes before we came on, it, it was uh, the, the, the songs were breaking up as I was trying to play them. I mean, yeah. these, these are MP3s that are on my machine, but I presume it goes through badly because of how we're connected to the stream. But um, well, well, perhaps perhaps next time um, let, we, we should try uh, broadcasting from mine. And I'll call you, and 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 you'll have to give me obviously a um a, a bit of a lesson in how to do it. But if we yeah, which, no, we can right. try that, can't we? Would that make a difference? Uh, it might be worth trying, yeah, because um, if it is my connection, but then if it's what Ken says, we don't want to fuck your connection up as well, do we? <laughs> well, well, can, can I ask you a rhetorical question? Please do. Does your website come under attack? Well, what do you think? Well, it did it. <laughs> same people, same same entity. Yes. Yeah, our website's come on. It came came under quite bad attack, didn't it? Once I think that's that's I know of anyway. I mean, Tony's the tech guy. He knows all the. The ins and outs and the details and everything. So he'd be the one to give you a definitive answer on that. But um, I don't think he's about tonight. So uh, no, there was. Uh, I don't think we'll get an answer on that. But yeah, I think that I can recall one time when there was quite a um, a sustained attack. Yeah, yeah, that went on for over twenty four hours, and it did actually manage to take the site down. Um, but it was quite curious that whoever it was didn't manage to get into the site they just well they obviously the nature of the attack they weren't interested in getting into the site they just wanted to bring it down so we've possibly got something like that going on but hey that's a mad conspiracy the theory isn't it things i used to be able to affect support and environment build Given that I control the environment the program was working in, if there was a naughty program and there was one once who was doing stupid things like crashing an entire mainframe, um, I could load a bit of software above what he thought he was calling and I could change his keyboard, I could switch his terminal off, I could just give him a whole load of crap. I controlled what he got. Mm -hmm. So basically that's what I believe they could well be doing. Yeah, because they control the environment out there. I know it because I've done it. Not, not on a network, not at that level. But on a mainframe or on a, on connected mainframes. You see, people people think that, 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 that this sort of thing's really sophisticated, but it's not really. I mean, all you've got to do is disrupt the way that we've been disrupted tonight. And and it's I, I'd I'd say I'd suggest it to, to somebody that knows what they're doing. To disrupt something that we're doing here would be like you throwing a bunch of tacks in front of a, under the wheels of a moving car and perhaps, you know, try to flatten its tyres. Just disrupting it, that's all it is. It's not going to, you know, it's not difficult to do. So they can put something on, you know, on our website or, 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 but it seems to be Andy at Andy's end that it's, that it's all going off. And Andy is the main hub of, of Raconteur's News. So that's probably just what they're doing. It's just a bit of disruption. We, we, we'll just, we'll, we'll ride it out and we'll, uh, we'll always find a solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we certainly will, Jason. Um, so, yes, back to Jimmy's question before the break. Uh, where was it? It's gone now. Uh, it's in Skype, isn't it? That's it. Uh, yes, lads, would Ken agree that there are some benefits to being part of an EU trading block and some of their higher courts which are available if one can't get remedy in the courts of Britain? Well, there you go. How can there possibly be higher courts? The answer, uh, the answer I gave in the in the chat room is yes and no. Now the way I look at it is, it depends which arena you you are choosing to perform in. Um, I'll give you an example that Jason will understand. It is against the law to deliberately handle the ball, and 
the penalty is you'll get a red card, sorry, a yellow card. Um, but that only applies to those within that arena. Right? Yeah. It's exactly the same as, to go back to Jimmy's question, if you choose to exist within that arena, then you accept their rules and you accept that there is a higher court in a foreign land somewhere. That's treason. That's against yeah. English, sorry, British law. And that, you know, that's true. It, uh, like, like I'm sorry, I've said before to Andy. I think that sport is used more and more to to for us to to accept things that aren't right. You know, we, things that aren't right, and, and we, we, but we choose to accept it. And then you say, you know, there's a referee, and and the, and the referee. So people are like the people that are playing the game. And the people that are playing the game, the people that are watching, are replicating their behaviour. And if they're just accepting of whatever punishment is handed down, no matter how in, unjust it is, then that, that makes them more likely to do that in real life. All of those premiership footballers have something on a, on a shirt with the, the word respect, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, respect. So if you don't respect and you're an evil lawbreaker and um, an outcast, it, as I, I'll go back to it, within that arena, that's the way it is. It's an imposed um, system that we don't have to accept. But there is much debate, as you guys know, on law, the rights and wrongs, of what's going on in the courts and all of this. My view is that there is no law. We are, we are actually <laughs> under occupation military law. That's my view. Mm -hmm. So basically, you have no voice. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, we've got another question coming from Nolan for Ken, and he's asking, does Ken think that if we leave the EU, there will be more whistleblowers coming forward about geoengineering and such things? I have no idea. I would like to think that it would come forward anyway, but... Um my big problem I had when I worked for the government was that I didn't keep my mouth shut. I would say what I saw. Uh, obviously, my career didn't progress very well. You'd like to think that the people who are performing these deeds have a soul and know what's right and wrong. They should whistleblow, if that's the term that's being used for speaking truth. Uh, but the answer to the question, I have no idea. And we've also got another one, oh, a comment actually from Jimmy saying Britain was involved in the setting up of the Court of Human Rights in The Hague, so how could it be treason? Followed by Mithrin saying, I vote we dig up Ted Heath and piss on him. Yeah, I vote for that. Um, might as well put that to there as well. Um, which, which Britain was involved and when was it done? We haven't had a legitimate since 1972, I think. It's been an awful assembly of British law. But again, yeah. oh, this thing is their rules. I wonder if it's argument. My position is it's only or is something there, there's somebody there to enforce it. And it seems to have lost anybody who wants to really enforce the law. I didn't really get any of that. I did I'm getting that for. Try again, Jay. I don't know what's going on. This must really bad going to on this scrap, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I'm really sorry about this, folks, but I think um, it's pointless carrying on like this because, uh, unfortunately, Toddy's just joined us as well. Um, we've got a great crowd there in the chat room, but... Um, I doubt you're going to be able to hear us any better than we can hear each other. And if we can't hear each other, the conversation's pretty difficult. So uh, I think we're going to need to abandon ship on this one and uh, get on to uh, Sky, that is S-K-Y, Sky, Fibre Broadband Technical Services, and uh, get something sorted out. So uh, sorry to disappoint, folks, but uh, we've tried our best, and it, it's just getting worse and worse. So... Uh, I think the best thing we can do is call it a night and uh, I will say um, do come back.
Thursday night because um, Luby has managed to get a commitment from someone I've been trying to get on the show for the best part of two years now. And that is uh, an amazing guy called Dr. David Halpin, a retired surgeon. Um, you may have come across him because he's um, he's incredibly knowledgeable about... Um, Oh, which we've been told it's not that bad. Oh, anyway, I'll carry on telling you about David Happen. He's, uh, he's the main man when it comes to uh, knowing what really went on with Dr. David Kelly. And also, he spent a, a vast amount of his own cash hiring a trawler and taking our aid to Gaza, only to be uh, sabotaged by the Israeli armed forces. So... That's a guy I'm really looking forward to. And uh, thanks once again to Luby for getting us such top guests lined up. And uh, then we have, uh, yeah, this weekend we're doing a pre-record. Uh, unfortunately, Jason's busy, so I'll just be doing it with uh, Gordon Bowden and the guys from Pandora's Box Investigations. That will include in Pete Bromfield and David Veach. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that because David's been bigging it up ever since we made the arrangements on Facebook saying they've got some real big news to bring out with us. So really looking forward to that one. And um, that will go out on the second. So uh, that should be a good one. And uh, we'll see if we can get Paul back on soon and uh, make amends for the shambles that has been tonight. So we've been told, no, it's not that bad. So we'll press on till we get to the top of the hour. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's I think that's um, ideal. There's uh, somebody saying in the in the chat room where it's not too bad. It's a little bit crackly, but they can live with it. And it seems to while you've been saying that, it seems to have got a lot better anyway. So uh, what do you think, Ken? Yeah, the echo's gone now. I can hear you too clearly. You get that all right? Yep. Yeah. Brilliant. Yep. No, it's nice to be able to hear one another. <laughs> it was just weird, weren't it? It just went all really stupid and daft. And I, 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 I said something and I spoke for quite a while and I can't even remember what I spoke about now. But, uh, yeah, it, it was a little bit weird. Jason. Sorry? I said, thankfully, we couldn't hear it. <laughs> oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do love me, don't you, Ken? You one do. Of those- and you little digs, yes, you know me, man. I know, I love you. I, I love do him. love you. I, I, I couldn't live without him, honestly. Let's have a let's have a little love in for about half an hour. Right, but yeah, we've got about half an hour left. So what we're going to talk about next is um, what what do you reckon? Anybody? Well, I, I was up? I was hoping tonight we'd be able to play the um, latest tune from Bedrock, but unfortunately, due to all this palaver with the internet. I haven't been able to get it downloaded, so... Oh, hang on. I might be able to do it another way. Uh, oh, no, you sent me a download link, didn't you? Yeah, if you sent me it in Skype, I could just drag it across, but... Uh, I, I did... Oh, well, tr- every cloud and, uh, you know, all that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you put it on a cloud, didn't you? You're trying to be clever now, okay? <laughs> Oh yeah, excuse me. Ah. They're always oh. thirsty, Andy. So what? Do, what do you? Um, what's the main thing that you find different between life here in Britain and life in? Which uh, uh, to change your expletives? Because I, I would imagine in Spain you'd have to like if if you saw something. Um, that was a, a little bit off-putting. You'd have to say Jesus Christ rather than Jesus. Is it is it more than that, or is is that just about it? Jesus. Um, the difference there is the the main difference I feel when I drive out of that ferry port at Portsmouth is a pressure. I feel um, I'm back into. Um, I'm back on a manic motorway and I'm back on British roads where there's lots of cars and people driving too close. Um, it doesn't happen around here. I'm, I'm in the middle of some mountains 
But I can drive from here up to Santander, which is about a three hour drive. And I can see a car in the distance in the front, and I can see a car in the distance in the mirror, and that's about it. No jammed up motorways. Just drive and be happy and look around at the mountains and whatever the scenery. Uh, it's not as frantic. Uh, and, and you wouldn't think it, would you? If you were trying to tell somebody that was in that rat race, in that nine to five job that, that drives into London every day to do the job, if you were to try to explain that to them, they, they wouldn't even be able to. They wouldn't even be able to see it. You have to. You have to experience it, don't you, in order to be able to appreciate it. But it, you can feel it when you. As soon as you drive out of that port, you can. I, I feel the pressure. I'm all of a sudden, a big, massive weight on my head. And I'm looking in the mirror, rear view mirrors, watching idiots on roads. I may be one of those idiots, who knows? Um, and you're just manic and you, the stress and tension goes up. Yeah. It's not like that. I can drive into Leon on a lovely road. and Leon's a bigger city than Newcastle. It's, it's a big city. It's not frantic. I mean, it was it was total gridlock here the other day. I think there was two cars in the village or something. Oh my! You know, pandemonium. I said, "We just arrived." Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, we're going to... Jesus Christ! <laughs> there is two cars. There's a, there's a little church just uh, about hundred yards or so from here, and very often there's a car parked in there. And the registration plate says 666. <laughs> and, 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 but it's interesting that you say that when you when you sort of pull out of the harbour at Portsmouth, that you feel like this weight is lifted off you, off your no, shoulders. Absolutely. And that just that just shows you that because th there's nothing actually physical happening. It's 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 your in your your subconscious is saying, okay, well I've got this. I'm going to this other place now where the, you know there's the the there's not as much to worry about. There's not as much to 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 care about. You know, you can, you can spend more time thinking about yourself because when you're in a busy place and you're in somewhere where you're having to try and second guess what somebody else is going to do at any point, that that's quite a physical, that's quite a stressful situation for your subconscious. But you've got this, you've got this uh, inbred sort of like we seem to have it. Particularly in this country, and in America, but we seem to have this like inbred um, type of uh, competition mentality. And so, when you're going to a somewhere, um, there's nothing actually physically happening when you're leaving that harbour in Portsmouth. But subconsciously, a lot of things are, are, are gone from your from your mind. And and I think that's if people could. Um, protect the subconscious and not get involved in all that sort of nonsense. I think that that, that uh, people would fare a whole lot better. That was a great little speech there, Jason, but you got it totally arse about face, mate. Ken was saying yeah, that the, the, he feels the pressure on him when he gets to Britain rather than lifting off his shoulders. Yeah, so I said, when, so yeah, when he leaves Portsmouth, I said. Yeah, right. outwardly. Portsmouth. Look, here's an example. You know, you, you come into Portsmouth and you've got to show your passport, <laughs> even though I am British in quotes. I've driven it to Santander, was it about four times now? I don't know how many times. Um, not one of them's looked at my passport, pulled it up. You know, it could be a picture of Mickey Mouse on there, and nobody's looked at it. Just drive through. Um, Okay, sirrah, sirrah, I suppose, as far as bringing a car full of arms and things in for Etta, you know, which I could have done. <coughs> but it's just more laid back. I bet now you've said that they'll stop you next time, Ken. <laughs> I don't mind. Look at my passport. It's a lovely picture. <laughs> have you yeah, got your, is it the one when you've got your favourite dress on? Yes, that's that, the one. Yeah, I like um, that picture. Yeah. Uh, the, the stupid thing is, I mean, it's it's all been checked to get on the ship. So they know that you're there. They've checked your passport at that end. So they don't need it when you get off. Uh, we've got a possible reason in the chat room as to why you might not get stopped. Mithrin's saying no foreigner could fake that accent. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Thanks, Mithrin. I love Mithrin's Welsh accent. I haven't spoken to him as well. It's wonderful. Yeah, his Welsh accent's about the same as Tony's, I think, because he uh, lives quite close to Tony. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just oh. thought when I saw that name, I thought it would be Welsh, but um, is it something to do with Lord of the Rings or something like that? No idea. I've got to, I've got a question here, actually. Um, see if you can guess who it's from. Heath. That's right, yes, well done. Um, it's for Andy. It says, this one's for Andy. <laughs> so, are you going to run a competition for the best photo wearing a Raconteurs News t-shirt? Winner gets a no-expenses-paid holiday to Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> no-expenses-paid, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that, yeah. We could do that, a no-expenses-paid holiday. Yeah. So if you'd like to win a no-expenses-paid holiday, please send a picture of yourself uh, in your Raconteurs News T-shirt, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll, we'll draw one out, a lucky winner. Yeah, we'll have to get people buying them first, though. Um, the, the, the response to the T-shirts being offered for sale has, has been mostly underwhelming. Um, I, I, in fact... Uh, there's only you and one other that's bought one, Jason. So <laughs> it's uh, been quite disappointing. But hey, give it time. They ain't going to go away. They ain't going to go mouldy. So uh, they'll still be there when folks decide they want them. The, are you sure they're going to go off? They're not fruit of the loom, are they? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my God. They, of course they're going to go off the fruit. Oh, yes. <laughs> fruit of the loom, heavyweight. The, the they're, they're, I can't remember the heavyweight or super heavyweight. They're uh, one of the most expensive Fruit of the Loom t-shirts. So um, they're pretty damn good quality. But I would recommend that you wear them if, if you're going to wear them all day, first time you wa- – sorry, wash them before you wear them for any length of time because uh, I wore mine for a day out, a brand new one, and did get a bit of jogger's nipple first day. So – I'd recommend that you wash them before you wear them. Yeah, well, I've just had a, a message from Heath. He says they're nice T-shirts, and he should know because he's got one. Oh, nice. So, uh, yes, they are nice T-shirts. And we, uh, do you know what we don't do? We don't plug the T-shirts and the things uh, very often, do we? We don't do it. We no. don't. The, it's the one thing we really neglect to do. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the T-shirts, it, you know, we, we just – we should – at least once every show, we should uh, bring up the T-shirts and say, you know, if you want to buy a T-shirt and become a raconteur, raconteur's news T-shirts, yes, in the store, whatever. You, what you know, expand your market. What the force did, as well as T-shirts, they had force G-strings. <laughs> and they sold. Oh, right. I'll have to look at that. Get some G-strings printed. <laughs> just, well, just put RN, though, because they tend to be quite small. What I was thinking, if we got G-strings printed, we could perhaps just have them with a picture of Jason on the front. Yeah. Uh, you could get it. Oh, there's that. I've just thought of another marketing ploy. You could um, do some fire guards and put a picture of Jason on the front. <laughs> Ken, nobody has a fire guard these days. It's against the law. You'd, that means you'd have to have a chimney. And, and if you've got a chimney, you've got, like, smoke coming out of it and that. So that's yeah. against the law. You can't have smoke coming out of your house now, you know. My abode in good old Grand Britannia has got two chimneys. And there's chimneys here. No children, so you don't need a fire guard. I just watch how much devil you drink, you know, when the fire's on. Apart from that. I think we're amusing Rick Dwyer anyway. He's enjoying the conversation. (laughs) (laughs) By the messages I'm getting on Skype. Good on you, Rick. Yeah, next time we have a a no show from a guest like this, you got to call in, Rick. We'd love to talk to you. And everybody would love to hear from you. Nobody's heard He's from you since Run For Omni Cure, and uh, that's a while ago now, bro. 
Yeah, Heath's just sent me a text mes- a message that says, uh, they take your kids off you for having a fire guard these days. <laughs> You're not supposed to put your kids on fire. Unless they're no, very, very... Over the fire. If you went in for a fire guard somewhere, why, have you, why are you buying this fire guard and it's for the kids and then they come and take, you, take your kids off you? Yeah, I suppose if they came in and saw the picture of Jason on the fire guard, then that would be some kind of abuse, wouldn't it? Traumatic uh, experience for the poor child. Is that, is, that a, is that aimed at me, Ken? As if. As if, Jason. But... So, um, you've uh, been doing another tune for us, Ken. Um, what's, what's, what's the latest Red Hot hit from uh, the Land of the Midnight Sun? Um, we can work together. Oh, we'll work together. Excellent. Little county number. Yeah. Well, um, we'll be playing that on Thursday night, so I hope David Halpin enjoys it. <laughs> well, and run, uh, run it through before you play it, Andy. Check it out first. Oh, why is it real garbage? Uh, I don't know. I've never heard it through a radio. <laughs> I'm, sh- I'm sure it'll, it'll be first deck, you know all first deck so what comes out goes out yeah well there's been no complaints about any of your previous output that we've played uh, Ken and everybody seems to love it so I'm looking forward to playing that one I oh, shall uh, a, very kind have a listen when I get off the air if the internet will let me download it but um, it's always a bit of a risk yeah, it's just done for fun, and that's uh, that's how I hope it's taken. Yeah, here's a question for all you from Mithrin. He's asking: Is a fire guard a bloke who works for G4S and shouts at you to stay away? Uh, probably these days, it's, it's, it's probably something the council have got that you got. If you got a fire, you've got to have a G4S guy in there. They got him in the job centre, so why not in front of your fire? Keep his ass warm all day, anyway. And run in Lincolnshire Police, and uh, I think it's coming soon to a, a police force near you. Mm. Yeah, I, I once had a, a bit of a running with a G4S guy over a, a, a fire issue. I was stood in front of a fire door, um, and he came up and he said, excuse me, can you move? You're blocking a fire door. And, and I, I, I like said to him, I says, what do you mean I'm blocking the fire? I'm just waiting for me. I think my missus were in the toilet or something. So I'm just waiting for my missus in the toilet. He says, you, you're blocking fire door. And like I said to him, I says, look, if there's a fire, I'll run. I won't be blocking it anymore. Will I? You know, if, if, you, if, you've, if you can run, you're not, you're not blocking a fire door. So kick me out, though. You criminal. Fire door, though. Seriously, how can you block a fire door? If, you, if you're there, stood in front of the fire door, if the fire door is needed, you're not there anymore because you've run off. You've gone. Have you any idea how many pubs block off the fire door to put a band on in their pub, which is not designed for it? The band's playing in front of the fire door, and it's blocked off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Probably happens all the time. Many, many, many pubs like that. You've got plenty of exits, but you're still blocking a fire door. With a marshal stack. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is on wheels, though, Jason, so you could shift it out of the way. Yeah, you could, yeah. G4, yeah, G4, Midrin, uh, Mithrin, sorry. I keep saying Midrin because that's what it says on screen. Mm. Mithrin. Uh, 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 has put G4S wankers, which I've got to agree with. I think we all agree with that. Uh, it, it really would be pushing it for me if it's somebody wearing G4S trying to arrest me. It wouldn't no, happen. Yeah, they'd, yeah, they'd be, yeah, you can't do that, can you? you? Can't get arrested by a private security firm. No. 
I mean, even if you trespass somewhere they're guarding, they've got to call the police to arrest you. So the well, police I, you, I had, a, I had a, a, a reply to my, um, you know, my uh, uh, coppers smashed into my house. And I complained. Yeah. Yep. Well, I had a, I had a response today. And the, the response, the, the, the investigation that he'd done and the conclusions that he'd come to was so, uh, well, it, it was just, it was just, a, a, just a mess. It didn't really mean anything. So I wrote him an e- email. I'm going to, I'm not going to. I'm not going to send you what. I'm not going to read you what he said. Yeah. I'm going to read you what I emailed back to him. Okay. Um, simply because. Oh no! So. I've just got a message. Um, we've got an apology from Paul for not being able to make tonight's show at such short notice. Um, if you're listening, Paul, um, not a problem. We've muddled through, and uh, thankfully, with the state of the internet tonight, it's probably a good job that we we're going to have to reschedule because it would have been absolutely dreadful trying to get Paul's information out with this internet connection. Um, but uh, we'll get him back as soon as we can. So uh, I hope you get your thing sorted out soon, Paul. Can mm-hmm. I suggest you don't um, you don't let out when that's going to be, and it just Paul appears on a show. <laughs> you may have the connection. Sort of beats beats the object, that though, Ken, doesn't it? Really, I mean, we'll not tell anybody we're going on. We'll just go on. No, it's a scheduled show because all of these loyal followers are going to be tuning in. Oh, it's just, yes. just a thought. It's, it's a bad thought from a commercial point of view, mm-hmm. but from a practical point of view of um, you know finding out whether it's being slugged or not, that's that's my that's my point of sale there. Worth considering, I suppose, Ken. But um, people like to know what you're doing, what's what output you've got coming up, don't they? Well, the note's going to be excellent. Well, obviously, apart from tonight, the note's going to be excellent. Um, so they'll be tuning in anyway just to hear your voice and Jason's gorgeous sexy voice <laughs> I can see his face he looks a bit dumbstruck so have you because got- I can't get some emails it's strange isn't it that I can't oh, I get into think- email at all I thought you got it all there ready to read mate well it was but I can't get into it now it's gone <laughs> oh, are they messing okay. me you as well? <laughs> oh, hang on. Here we go. I noticed um, Captain said earlier on in the chat room that he was having trouble with his internet connection tonight, so maybe they're getting us ready for the big shutdown. Okay, here we go. I've got, I've got, I've got it up. <clears throat> His name's Andy Hunt. He's uh, uh, Chief Inspector. Dear Andy... Hi. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. (laughs) Dear Andy, thank you for your ambiguous, to say the least, reply. Good to see the culture of covering up crimes, covering up the crimes and failings of your staff is still an integral part of South Yorkshire Police's culture. Your entire reply is ambiguous and non-committal on your part. For example, you speak of a warrant. There has never been a warrant served in regards to this matter and any warrant would be unlawful in any case and there isn't a warrant on the planet that would allow the constables to act in the manner they did under those circumstances. You have clearly used this opportunity to try and justify the unlawful actions of members of your gang. This will now be escalated to the IPCC and your name added to the growing list of South Yorkshire Police staff under investigation. I will also begin legal proceedings against South Yorkshire Police and private criminal prosecutions against a number of officers in attendance on the day. I am disappointed that you took such a long time to come to what was always going to be the usual outcome. We investigated ourselves and found we did nothing wrong. 
Have a look in the dictionary at the words integrity, justice and truth. Justice with courage, which is the, um, the South Yorkshire Police's motto, more like cover up with cowardice. See you in court, Jason. Brilliant, Jason. I'd love to see his face when he reads that. <laughs> oh, yes. But he came back, we, um, we are really ambiguous. I don't want to read it out because it's going to be subject to legal proceedings. So Yeah, fair enough, mate, right, yeah. Um, I, I just, um, but, but it was really ambiguous. It was so, sort of like, oh, well, this officer... Um, thought that he did this, or or this officer says he did this. So it, that's with the non-committal bit that I wanted to get into with him, because he wasn't committing and saying, no, this officer didn't see the 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 um, the warrant or did see the warrant. Is what he's saying is the the officer says they saw the warrant or said so. He's sort of like covering his own back, you know, which is what they do. I mean, it's the the reply is the the the, the um, the reply he gave me was only a little bit longer than what I've just read to you, and it took him three months to write. Yeah, bloody hell. He's a policeman, you know. Well, well, yeah, I know there's that, and he's probably typing with one finger, but, you know, you would have thought that three months he, he could have perhaps employed somebody to do it for him, you know, but there's cuts, police cuts and everything in there. And South Yorkshire Police, I've got quite a lot on the plate. I, I think I'm pretty much down on the uh, down on the priorities at the moment. But it it is nice to uh, to be able to you know stick stick my boat in. Um, and I did uh, notice that when I came out, uh, I went to chemist today to pick up my monthly prescription. And when I came out. They were a police car waiting for me and it, it followed me home. But whether that was just a, a normal thing or what, I don't know. But it just seemed a little bit funny. But, yeah, we like to like to get in and stick one in the ribs every now and again. Oh, there's a, a, an absolute amazing piece of audacity there. Toddy's just mentioned in the cat, chat room. He's saying that... Um, the council wanted £850 for the day at the street, street kitchen at City Square and sent Leeds City Police Inspector and his sergeant to tell us why they, what they wanted. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> so you go out there and you, you feed people who, through no fault of their own, are homeless and they want you to pay 100, 850 quid for the privilege. What a bunch of jokers. Toddy so said he told him to go back to the council and tell them from me, Toddy, that the council don't own the land, we the people do. Nice one, Toddy. Yeah, yeah nice one. Toddy's a good guy. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen, uh, I've seen some stuff on Facebook. Uh, he's been doing some really good work um, recently, helping out the uh, feed the homeless those kitchens in Leeds and he's been doing some sterling work and I did notice I, I did see I've not been I've only really been sort of skirting over the, the posts and things I've not been reading him in depth but depth but perhaps that's what he were talking about when he said that they had one or two um, issues early on but they were soon sorted so uh, well done to well done Toddy yeah good work I am smoking a fag <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I can't type and speak at the same time. You should know my limitations by now, Jason. Yeah, you, Jack, were, ty you were typing and you got a fag in your mouth as well. That was like, well, hey. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you, how's the the old? Is it wood buying you on? No, it's just a roll up. Oh, is it? Okay. I don't smoke them awful tailor made things. They're, they're not good for you. Ah, uh, you see, uh, Ken's got some Pueblo. That's Spanish for woodbine. Sin aditivos. Sin aditivos. So I ain't got all the crap in and the stuff that we smoke. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I think we're just about nearly at the end of the show, aren't we? Yeah, I suppose we are. Um, 
So we'd better find a tune to put on for tonight. Well, I suppose we've really got to find one of Ken's, haven't we? Let's have a look. I'm going to have to. I'd like to. Oh, well. Very nice. Thank you. There we go. Right, folks. Um, sorry for all the uh, technical issues tonight. Hopefully we'll have them sorted out for when we get David helping on. Well, we better have them sorted out for David helping because it would be a shame to mess that one up. Um, we'll be back at 7 p.m. Thursday, and we'll be going. disease and die young. And, above all else, don't mention the war!